they've made some very amazing things. They also had uh, a few months ago uh, a snow article. Um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see it, but it's, it's also uh, quite fascinating what they've been able to achieve with some of these stories. And so what we've done with the Yahoo app is we've taken a set of uh, photo editors and videographers and have created these cinematographs ourselves. Uh, so we have in the order of hundreds of these already accounts, uh, and we're investing in creating even more of those. Um, and so we attach them to stories that we think are uh, particularly relevant, and we think that this allows us to bring stories to life. So this, this is already launched in the, in the Yahoo app. A few more examples here. Just uh, out of curiosity, by raise of hand, how many people were aware of this feature of the Yahoo app? Okay, just one. So I'm glad, I'm glad I can teach you guys something new today. Um, here's one of my favorite ones. So it's very hard to get a clip of Obama and, and actually um, be able to create a, an infinitely looping um, element. And here the, the animation has stopped, but I think it's, it's a, an, an interesting challenge to not have the ability to have him sit in a room and do exactly what we need him to do so that it loops. Um, but we've got an amazing um, editorial team for this. Um, the other thing in, in, in sort of the, the visual um, elements that we thought about the app, it, it, it used to be the case a, a few months ago that uh, if you wanted to see your stream of news, we had two different ways of displaying it for you. We had what we call the visual stream, and we, have, and, and we also have the classic stream. So the classic stream is very much of this view that I think most people are used to. But we also had this hypothesis that people wanted to consume news in a, more, more, a much more visual way. And one of the things that we realized as we experimented, uh, experimented with, with these two different ways of displaying the stream is that some people felt very, very strongly that they wanted to see the visual stream, and some other people felt like they wanted to see the classic stream. Um, and so what we ended up doing was, uh, at some point, and this no longer exists in the app, but at some point, and I'll tell you why in a second, at some point, we were offering people, when you first open the app, the ability to show, choose, do you want to see the visual or do you want to see the classic mode? Um, and it turns out that data showed us that about 40% of people um, prefer to see stories in a visual view, and about 60% of people prefer the classic. <coughs> Sorry. So one of the things we learned here was um, that our hypothesis is that visual was good was fought on, but there was also still a need to go through a very dense um, stream of news. Um, and part of the, the lesson here was that there's still a lot of value in parsing through headlines um, in a quick manner um, and get a sense of what's going on before you actually decide to spend you know, more than 10 or 20 seconds in a given story. Um, so I think this goes back to the idea of like, how are you short and how can you convey the information in such a period of time. So what we ended up doing when we found this out was we, um, we, we started tweaking and making sure that all of the different screens uh, were visually pleasing. Um, and we modernized the classic stream um, from the left um, a few months ago to what we have now on the right-hand side. And we did the same with what we used to call the visual stream. The visual stream was a nearly infinite uh, vertical scrolling metaphor, um, and then we realized that um, these, two, these two notions did not have to exist sort of in tension with each other, but rather we could bring both of the ideas together so that when you first open the app, you get the classic stream. But as soon as you tap on an article, you get taken to the article view, which is very visual. And from there, you can actually swipe sideways and go through different articles um, and get the same, you know, the same feeling that you're going through a visual stream. Um, after we've done all of these changes um, and, and very hard work over the last few months, um, yesterday for the first time in a very long time, we raced to the top um, of the free news apps on the App Store. Uh, and it's something that we're extremely proud of. Uh, I'm pleased to see that the hard work has been paid off. Uh, of course, these rankings change with some, you know, some frequency, um, but <coughs> We were looking at the rankings yesterday and got very excited that you know, for the first time in a while we, we were actually managed or we actually managed to hit number one. Uh, on some occasions we've actually uh, listened to the number two spot and typically Craigslist was beating us. Um, 
which we felt did bad about, because technically it's not a news app. Um, I think this is something that they've just decided uh, that that's their category, and for some reason I think people are more interested in, in commerce than in news on their mobile phones. Um, but as of yesterday, we were finally able to rise to the number one spot in the U.S. app store. <coughs> Sorry about that. So the, the third um, uh, point of inspiration that I wanted to highlight for you guys is about being instant. And for this one, I want to share a personal story of something that, that, that I went through uh, on April 19th of this year. Um, if you recall, that was basically when the match hunt was happening for the Boston, um, for the Boston bombing uh, and the MIT uh, shooting. So I went to Reddit. Um, uh, it was probably like midnight or 2 a.m. here on that Thursday night. And I found this thread that was updating in real time. I think at the time, nobody actually knew that the Boston bombing and, and this sort of MIT shooting were actually connected. There was this guy uh, with the Reddit username of Monitor General who was actually listening to police scanners and updating, <coughs> sorry, updating uh, in pretty much real time, minute by minute, uh, what, what he was hearing. Um, and the impressive thing here is that this coverage lasted like, you know, a good 12 to 15 hours of this person, you know, some sort of anonymous person on the, on the internet that just found this voice on Reddit and figured out a way to listen to police scanners and then update the information in real time. And I felt like I was getting a lot more out of this than anything else because at the time, a lot of the information was obscure. And if you remember, um, at some point, the, the, the sort of man on block down to the 20 block um, radius around Watertown. And at that point, uh, the police realized <coughs> that this was happening and sort of started asking the folks that were publishing this to try to um, not give any sort of specific geographical information about what was going on so that in, in case the, the suspects had um, any sort of uh, any sort of access to the web that they couldn't actually see the information. So after a while, they started, you know, giving uh, a bit more vague and general statements about what was going on. But I thought it was a fascinating way to actually uh, <coughs> track this story in real time. And so one of the things that, that we did, as sort of a follow up to this, was we we released an update to the app with breaking. So yesterday, we had the unfortunate LAX incident. Um, we sent out a push notification to our users right away. And when you landed on this stream, you would see the breaking news bar at the top. And if you tapped on that, you could actually get um, basically the minute-by-minute -minute updates um, that, that we, of, of the development of what was going on at LAX. Um, and even though it's a very sad story, uh, I'm very proud of the way that our editors were able to cover this in real time and for people to have an app that essentially notified them, hey, something important is going on, and you can track minute by minute what's what's happened with this story. So I want to move on to to um, to the trend section. Um, hopefully um, things that, that may inspire you to, to come up with ideas this weekend. Um, once again, focus on, on three, uh, three ideas or, or three uh, sort of flows that I think uh, are, are very interesting in, in today's world. Uh, let's start with speed. Um, there's a story about this earthquake that happened on August 23, 2011. Um, the epicenter was around uh, Richmond, Virginia. And it was a 5.9 scale, 5.9 Richter scale uh, earthquake. Um, and some people started tweeting about this earthquake. And folks who were in New York started to hear about the earthquake that was happening in, in Virginia, the D.C. area. And they actually, because of, of how fast the seismic waves um, travel, they were actually able to hear about the earthquake before they felt it in New York. And XKC, in one of my favorite online comics, uh, had a, a funny take on this, uh, which was you know an, an explanation of how this is even possible. So seismic waves travel between three and five kilometers per second, but information through fiber optic travels around 200,000 kilometers per second, and uh, you know with some network like lag and so on. 
But the, the funny thing was that the first reaction of people in New York uh, when they saw this on Twitter was not to go for cover, but rather to retweet it. Um, and I think that's a funny take. Twitter, of course, seized the moment and created this video. And uh, I to... Are you guys here? A little bit? take on Twitter. But what the point here is um, information now travels faster than ever. Um, I was reading um, the other day that a few, just a few decades ago, when, when they had big sporting events, the way that scores um, were sort of sent to people who were betting or who were interested in keeping track was with pigeons, carrier pigeons. And so right now, you have the ability to find out about information pretty much as quickly as whoever is close to the to the actual event that's going on. And so the question there is, is, is there anything fascinating that can be done uh, with the speed of, of information traveling? And speed, to me, is not, is not just about how the delivery of the, of the information happens, but also uh, processing power. Um, so there's a lot of information that's getting generated, but the question is, can we quickly sift through it to find what, what, what's actually matter, what signal versus noise? So that's the first trend I wanted to talk about. The second one is about voice. Um, and voice, to me, means that we now have distribution channels that didn't exist a decade or two ago, where some person who doesn't necessarily have an audience can actually reach one without, you know, without a big inconvenience. I think Twitter is one example. Uh, Reddit was another great example of this, where this anonymous person listening to police scanner uh, waves and, and, and information could actually generate you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of people actually figuring out what this person has to say. And that, that's, to me, that, that, that's basically a democratization of news and how anyone with a voice and something interesting to say today has tools and channels that they can tap into and reach a large audience provided that they have something interesting to say. Another good example of this, I think, I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with this one. Um, on January 15, 2009, U.S. Airways Flight 1549 uh, crashed into the Hudson River. Um, and I think one of the first images to emerge out of this uh, was this one of uh, Janice Crumbs, who happened to be in a boat that was going to rescue some of the passengers um, that were involved in the, in the flight crash. Uh, this, again, this person, nobody necessarily knew who he was before this incident, um, but suddenly was involved in an event that had a channel, namely Twitter and TwitPay, uh, where uh, he could actually reach people and tell a story. Um, this image on TwitPay alone generated over 1 million views, but as it was sort of retweeted and reshared across different networks, you can imagine this probably reached tens of millions of people. The, the last trend I want to talk about is, is about being personal. Um, and to me, being personal is, is resembled very nicely in, 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 in three apps that I think are, are, are doing very interesting things in, in this space. The first one is Prismatic. Um, Prismatic allows you um, to very specifically pick topics that you're interested in following. Um, and they've got you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of topics. Um, that, that are very granular sometimes, and they allow you to really personalize your experience based on those. Another one, News 360, um, again, they allow you to you know, personalize your experience based on topic. When I think of a very famous one, Flipboard, where they have categories of, of different subjects um, that you can subscribe to and generate your personal life. magazine around it. 
the, the point here that I want to make is that I think there's, there's roughly about two camps of thoughts here. There's one that says um, that's more around customization, and then there's another one which is a little bit more around personalization. To me, customization is about having the user go through some sort of onboarding flow or process where they say, hey, I'm interested in X, Y, and Z. Give me that content. So they're customizing. They're explicitly telling the system, I want this, that, and, that, and this other thing. The other type of camp is more around personalization. Um, and it's, one of, it's, it's the one that we focus mostly uh, here at Yahoo. So with personalization, you have the ability to tell us uh, specific topics that you're interested in. Um, but in addition to that, uh, we can actually um, deduce some of the uh, interests that you have um, and, and the topics that you like to read about based on some of the past behavior that you've done. Have you clicked on, on, on articles in the past? How long have you spent reading them? And we have a very good understanding um, where we do entity extraction um, and semantic understanding of the different documents that people are reading. And we have the ability to later on personalize people's experiences based on, um, based on what we know about their previous behavior and some of their demographic information. And so um, I think there's these two schools of thought. And I think both of them have been successful. Um, but I also think it's important to think about them as sort of two slightly different ways of trying to achieve the same goal, which is how do you create a personalized experience for users? Um, and I know that the, 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 the hackathon is supposed to start in about 15 minutes, I think. And so with that, what I want to do is, is spend some time uh, maybe doing a, a little Q&A session. I don't know if Antoine or Guy want to come up as well. Are there mics for people or just yes, one yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Um, one thing that caught my eye was actually how you assembled your presentation. Um, so like how you were able to recreate moments in time. Um, is that something that you stitched together or is that something that you guys actually had available to you? Um, I pretty much stitched it together okay. all myself. Um, <laughs> when I when I joined Yahoo, the one of the things that struck me very early on was that we had incredible designers here, um, something that I was not actually expecting, because I, it, it didn't seem like Yahoo was pushing the design side very much. Um, but I realized that we had fantastic designers. And very early on, I started seeing these keynote presentations and animated movies uh, with how app experiences should work. They were just once. They were not even prototypes. They were just completely built in After Effects or, or a combination of Photoshop and keynote. Um, and I saw these fantastic ways of storytelling. Um, and I started learning from, from some of these experts. Um, I have to admit, though, I'm using the new keynote um, that just came out with Mavericks. Um, and it was a little bit tougher to get some of these things working uh, because I deprecated some features that they used to have. Um, but I've always really admired and respected design and, and designers that have a, a good way of, of storytelling. Um, and I try to imitate them. Thank you so much for bringing it up. By the way, this is now like a 600 or 700 megabyte. <laughs> <laughs> After all, because right. a lot of these things are videos. Um, you know, it doesn't play very well with the actual animated chips. So things like the cinematographs, I actually have to record and do a screencast of my browser open and cut it at the right time so that it would move <laughs> exactly as I was playing with an editor game. Then. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and also just a. Uh, Continue tomorrow. I think tomorrow, right? Um, yeah. We have another master class with Jackie Goldberg, who is one of the, the key folks with user experience design at Yahoo. So it'll be a good a good time to yeah. ask questions there. Yes. Hi. Um, so you showed uh, that one screen about the streaming breaking news alerts that Yahoo has is doing now. One of the things that we really struggle with, I think, is designing these really cool experiences for the web, like that your stream or watch both have this thing called the stream. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot like that. But we but in terms of from an app editor perspective, it's really difficult for us to then take those things that are being designed and make sure that they're fully functional and working really well in our in all of our apps and on the mobile environment. How do you guys how do you make sure that I mean Yahoo is certainly pushing mobile big these days, but how do you actually make sure that that's happening from the very beginning? So I, I, to, to, to rephrase the question for people in case you weren't able to hear it, I guess it's about 
how do we make sure from the <clears throat> from the very beginning um, that 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 stories and and the design and the interface are going to look great on all types of devices, um, especially around mobile and, and how do we coordinate um, the. The reality here is I think we're still not doing a fantastic job yet. And, and uh, one of the things that, that we've done in practice, so when you look at things like cinematographs that we have in the app, they only exist in mobile right now. And that's been basically um, because we, one of the things that we are willing to do is experiment with different platforms and different, different device screens and say, do we think this is going to work here? Do we think it's not going to work here? Maybe it's not a, a unanimous um, sort of call that, that we think we have something big. And, and when we started investing in cinematographs, it wasn't clear whether it was going to pay off, whether people are going, were going to recognize them or even sort of emphasize with them or empathize with them. And so we, we did this for mobile. Um, it's not available anywhere else. It's not even available on the mobile website. It's only available on the app, although we, we have been talking about ways of, of taking that over. Um, but to, to not cop out of, of the questions, um, I think the way that we've done things is we, we've tried as much as possible, and I, and I honestly admit that we have struggled in some of these cases. We've, uh, we've tried to create a general structure um, that will work for everyone, a kind of you know, structured, in, uh, a structured output from the editorial side, um, and a way to actually um, very call out um, explicit things that need to be rendered. For example, the title and the hero image, the subheader if we have one, the source, the actual body, how the body is rendered. And um, we've gone back and forth a number of times to try to figure out like internal models of how stories should work so they can get rendered in everywhere. And so then each individual client um, or, or device type has its own rules about how things work. Get rendered. So in fact, if you go to the mobile website, um, again, it's not something that we're super proud of, but if you go to the mobile website versus the mobile app, you can see differences. Right? And, and we definitely want to try to converse and grab some of the best ideas. But uh, also, I think one of the things that, that affected us a bit was that um, historically, Yahoo was a very desktop-focused um, um, company. And so when I first joined and started working on the app, I realized that I had these native applications running on iOS and Android. Uh, where you wanted to get data, for example, in a JSON format that was very structured. But instead, what we were getting um, back was structured HTML documents and JavaScript and CSS, which you can render on, the, on, on a native on, on a mobile device. But as, as soon as the metaphor is about HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript, you end up coming up with basically a mobile website. And, and it doesn't give you all of the advantage of the native performance. And so we spent a number of months trying to come up with ways to surface some of the information in a way that's more friendly towards mobile devices. And I don't think that we have succeeded yet, um, but it's something that we pay a lot of attention. I wish I could give you um, like more of a secret sauce of something that we're doing, but I don't think that we're that successful yet. But there's a lot of communication, there's collaboration, there's willingness to experiment. And there's no, there's no fear of saying, you know what? Or a big, maybe things are going to be different uh, on desktop, tablet, or mobile, uh, and that's okay, and we'll see if things work. And I think that sort of um, uh, willingness to try things out um, has helped us and, and has allowed us to, to hopefully find good ideas that will then make it to all of the different devices. I don't know, Guy, if you have like, any insights from your side of the world. Um, Zero. Um, <laughs> You know, I think one of the one of the things that that you know this company has obviously been around for a little bit of time and has gone through some changes. And I think um, to echo one thing is the over the last year and a half or so um, since Marissa came in and folks like uh, Fernando have been here, we've just been experimenting a lot, right? Which is why this kind of forum is amazing, right? We've just been experimenting and breaking things, and things don't work sometimes, but but it's okay, right? And we've been uh, really collaborating more and more from an editorial product engineering and design perspective to see if we can just push envelope and, and create better, more wonderful products for, for you know, news consumers and, and others. So 
I think the real takeaway for me is just you just got to break the glass and it's okay. It's okay if it doesn't work, yeah. you know, in the beginning. You just you do it, you break it, you keep working on it and eventually, you know, beautiful things come come out. Yeah, I just remember that there may be some interesting lessons about the breaking, how we deal with breaking news now. Um, again, if you remember some of that inspiration was um, the manhunt of, of the Boston Bombers. And, you know, when, when I went through that experience, I was at the time working on the app and I realized I, I want this to be the experience that users mm -hmm. get. Um, when, when something breaking is happening, it has sort of, it, and, and the story develops over time. And, and so I, I, I spent a good chunk of time with the editorial team of how we could actually get this done and with the desktop and, and mobile websites, folks, and uh, realized that some of the tools we had were not ready for this kind of implementation. Um, so we ended up doing something interesting, which was we started using Tumblr as the, basically a data store, but also publishing um, sort of framework to actually have editors in real time, multiple of them, have very short snippets of here's a photo, here's some text, here's a link of what's going on. Um, and, uh, and, and the reality is uh, yesterday um, with these breaking news, um, we, we've, I think we had like our first like full end to end successful over on this. Because mm -hmm. um, that's the other thing, you cannot test this all the time. It's not like something being important that's worth um, sort of annoying users for is happening all the time. So you know we have a number of trial runs. In, in the in the beginning, uh, we were failing to send some push notifications because of the architecture that we were using. Right, you're trying to send like you know hundreds of thousands or millions of notifications within like 10 to 20 seconds. And so things are bound to break, and we've learned over time. So I think the the lesson here is um, you know experiment, iterate, right? Like figure out like Try something and make it better until you think that you that you have something that's good to go, and, and be willing to have a, a little bit of a disconnect between different experiences uh, while you're doing this. Desktop already also supports these sort of minute by minute updates because we we picked Tumblr as a uh, as a publishing tool that could act could very easily be part be parts from um, from a sort of web mentality, but also from a native mobile one. Any more questions? Someone in the back? Sorry. Come on, don't be shy. Yeah, over there. Well, in the journalism world, um, I think a lot of news organizations struggle with on the web or off the web. Um, so I see many of these print organizations, they, they're going mobile, they're going online. But all they're doing is taking their print content and putting it online. It's not really anything different. Um, how does Yahoo and other places differentiate um, differentiate themselves from from just putting content online. Well, I I think I mean thankfully we don't have that dilemma of the print world. I don't think we ever had anything in print, as far as I can tell. And and so I, I think that, that from the from the early days, uh, it's all been about digital. And I think that hopefully has allowed us to be in a mindset where we know we need to adapt and maybe some of the legacy business models and uh, ways to present information are not necessarily the same. I think the other the other um, important point that I didn't touch on, on, on the presentation but maybe um, relevant here um, is that I think one of the biggest struggles of some of the traditional um, print um, news organizations or, or or uh, editorial uh, publishing houses um, is maybe not so much about sort of bringing the content as they have it and putting it on a sort of mobile device or, or digital uh, media, but rather the fact that I think people are moving more and more towards aggregators of information rather than to specific publishers. Um, and I think this comes from the simple notion of the amount of information out there that is getting created at every time um, and at every second is growing exponentially. And there is, like, humanly, it's not humanly possible for any single organization to try to cover everything from an editorial standpoint. And, and the reality is, I think, lots of different um, um, 
publishers have very interesting things to say. And what I've realized over time is that people may have less and less affinity over the source of the information, but maybe more about what content they're getting and whether they're they're actually getting rewarded. So, so for I think for a lot of users, it may be more relevant that my friend is sharing this on Twitter or on Facebook rather than who's actually publishing. And so when you think about that notion, people are seeking like give me everything that I care about in a single place, as opposed to me having to go to 17 different magazines that I kind of like some of, and they existed in the print world, but I don't want to have to go to each individual website, or even less each individual app, right? In, in the mobile world, the, the sort of connect, you know, having jumping around from an app to another is very disruptive, at least compared to the web, where the linking structure allows you to just have a browser and go from, you know, to any HTML page that, that's going to render there. And that's proven to be even more difficult than mobile. And so what happens there is I think people are not necessarily willing to have, you know, the 17 uh, magazines that they care about in the print world that maybe they care about what two or three articles out of the 10 or 20 that they have, but rather, can you give it to me in a centralized place? I think that's been more of a struggle rather than in the visual presentation of, of the information. Because I think at the end of the day, some of the print, um, uh, you know, the, the print industry evolved you know, had a lot more time to evolve than some of the digital uh, technology that we have today. And I think they managed to find very delightful ways of presenting information. So it's not so much about, like, how does that get copied over, but rather the, the change in the amount of information and users seeking everything in an aggregated place. Okay. I think there was a question somewhere around there. Yes? The question about the is that that's a great question. Um, there isn't a specific piece of software that we're aware of that will create the whole thing for you, kind of like one click type of thing. There are some um, apps, though, that were, where you can actually create a, a not sort of like professional scale, but rather like a fun type of spin and graph. Um, so the process basically boils down to finding a, 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 a clip or shooting it yourself. Sometimes we shoot some of these clips ourselves. Sometimes we find clips online and, and get the full rides to, to sort of the editing process. Um, but the, the, and that's actually one of the toughest parts in reality. It's not so much about the editing work, but rather finding good candidates for something that is going to look natural and interesting and that it's actually going to loop nicely. Um, and then what happens is there's a process. <coughs> It's a combination of Photoshop and After Effects, uh, where you specify some of the areas that you want animated and everything else. You pick a frame that's going to be the, the still image. Um, and then you figure out where is the point in time where it actually needs to loop. Um, and, and, and there you go. And, and you know, end to end, it's, it, it, it can take a seasoned um, uh, sort of videographer or, or editor um, anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes to journey one once they have the the footage, and I've seen like some basic ones created in like less than ten minutes, five or ten minutes. Uh, there's a few online that are really exciting. There's there's somebody who's made them out of Stanley Kubrick films, um, and they are amazing. So we will go out uh, online as well. Yes, uh, I've noticed on your on the Yahoo News web page itself, it doesn't look like it's responsive as it's serving two different things for desktop and mobile view. And then you mentioned that on the native that you're working on converging the mobile mobile web experience closer to what you have natively. I was just wondering if you could speak to how if teams are in constant communication with each other and if you're planning on adding more convergence between desktop and mobile or just leaving something that will be mobile native only? Absolutely. So um, the first point is that the, the app that I work on, the Yahoo app, is supposed to more closely resemble Yahoo.com as opposed to news.yahoo.com, which are two slightly different properties. And I know that this has caused so much confusion <laughs> in our users over time. And, and it's definitely something that we think about a lot. Um, you know, what is the purpose of a Yahoo homepage versus what is the purpose of Yahoo News? 
Uh, we think of, of, about it a lot, and I uh, still don't think we have figured it out yet. Um, in terms of why you're getting different, the, the, the mobile website for Yahoo News, so going to museum.yahoo.com on your browser versus your phone, should be responsive and should be getting the same information. Sometimes you're getting different information because maybe you're in different experiment buckets. And so, so again, we're, we're a company that tries out a lot of things. And so what happens is there may be a new algorithm or a new interface or a new type of information that we want to show you. Um, and so therefore, it'll look a little bit different from, from you know, in two different devices. But, um, the, the, but it is kind of expected that the app will look different from Yahoo News. It should more closely resemble Yahoo.com. Um, and in terms of uh, feature convergence, yes, we talk about it all the time. Um, and we have a lot of questions about, you know, is now the right time? Or do we still have interesting ideas that we want to experiment with? Um, and, and, and sort of which points do we think we already have agreement and unanimous consensus that, that we have a winner and that we want to go uh, full, you know, you know, full throttle with it? Um, so we have this, these conversations constantly. And I, again, I don't, I don't think that we have, um, that we're anywhere close to succeeding in this space. I think it takes a while. It's also, obviously, yeah, it was going through, through a very transformational time uh, since Marissa came over. And, and so far, experimenting has paid off enough that, um, that we don't feel the urgency of, okay, stop it. And everyone, this is what you're going after. Everyone wants to get everything. Yeah. Any other questions? So I, I think we're going to stop now right. because we are, we are right on time to start the, the first uh, working session. So thank you very much, uh, Fernando. Very uh, <laughs> uh, I think, I think we, we couldn't uh, uh, dream of a, of a better introduction to, to these uh, two days of uh, high day to reinvent the format of the traditional article. A lot of very good examples. Uh, the cinema graphs, uh, the Circa uh, mobile, the work around uh, uh, Twitter. Um, I, I just to introduce this first uh, working session, um, I will uh, just be very clear on what we expect from you uh, for these two days, uh, and more precisely, uh, for the end of the two days. What are the deliverables uh, you will need to uh, submit and, and uh, jury members will uh, look at uh, to decide on the winner of this hack date. Um, so the, the first and the almost only uh, deliverable we, we ask you to work on is a five minute pitch of your uh, project or of your, your concept, your idea. Um, and so this, this five minute Pitch uh, can include a demo of a working prototype. So this means uh, for the teams who manage to, to do that, uh, uh, coding uh, an actual demo or a prototype uh, is very important. But it's not absolutely needed for the pitch, for the five minute pitch, because it can be done also only with slides or using both slides and uh, you know, uh, giving a demo of, of your working prototype. Um, this pitch needs to cover um, a few uh, area, a few uh, elements of the specifications of your project. Uh, so the editorial presentation of your, of your uh, idea, uh, the technical presentation, some elements of design, of user experience, and all of these, of all of these points, need to be covered by either slides uh, and or uh, uh, a demo of a working prototype. So this is the really what we're going to be working on uh, over two days, uh, and very important. It's absolutely uh, necessary for for all the teams to keep in mind that uh, you you are not working. On, on a project, you know, it's a kind of, you know, out of the blue idea, uh, you know, uh, uh, following this, this topic, kill the article. It needs to be something uh, uh, you are likely to implement back in the room. So here we have very different uh, uh, 
uh, teams profiles. Um, so it's it's very important for you to 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 go back to to the definition of your media organization and and, and really think about uh, something uh, you would actually uh, or your editors would actually want to use or you know something which is likely to be accepted uh, by your your editors uh, when you're back uh, after the hack days. Another element uh, we will ask you. To, to work on, but this is really a minor one. Uh, it's just to submit the, the a basic description of your project with a few uh, <coughs> snapshots or just a, a few mockups to design um, using an online form. I will provide you the, the access to this online form tomorrow afternoon, just so it's not you know in your way right now, uh, so you don't focus on. on Describing your project in a, in a short uh, description or doing the, the markets right now. So we'll do that only tomorrow afternoon, and um, and this will only take 10-15 uh, minutes. It's, it's really a minor uh, part of the of the work. And just to come back to the main the main uh, piece you're going to be working on uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, from five to six. Uh, you will all uh, pitch your ideas in teams uh, here, so five minutes for each team, in front of um, an audience uh, you know, of the participants, so more people will be uh, coming uh, tomorrow afternoon to see the, um, the, the, the pitches, which are, I think are going to be very exciting because uh, you're probably going to come up with very interesting ideas. Um, so we're going to have a, a bit bigger audience than that, and we're going to have uh, sort of three uh, jury members, uh, uh, which are going to be Mark uh, Glaser, executive editor of PBS Media Shift, uh, Carlos uh, Martinez de la Serna, uh, who's um, a fellow uh, of the Knight, um, uh, Knight Fellowship uh, for Journalism at Stanford University, and myself. Uh, so we are going to be the three jurors uh, uh, looking at the, at the pitches and following the, the five criteria that you, I, I mentioned and that you, you will see of the uh, rules I shared with you all. So editorial quality and originality, technical quality and originality, uh, design quality and user, uh, originality, so basically the user experience. Uh, then a very important point: the lack likeliness of implementation. And finally, just as a, uh, to complete these these uh, criteria, we will look at uh, the <coughs> relationship with the with the topic, just to make sure uh, you're not too much off topic, uh, which is a uh, uh, so work around a new format for uh, for the online news story. Um, so right now, I will take your questions about the rules, about the schedule uh, of the hack days, but uh, then we'll quickly switch to the first working session. Uh, and so here, basically, we don't want you to uh, immediately start coding, even if, if uh, some of you might have or already have ideas. Uh, so here, it, it's, it's going to be just a, a brainstorming session uh, with the, the objective of coming up with um, mini pitch for uh, the idea you will come up come up with now. So what do we call a mini pitch? Uh, it, it's it's uh, very simple. Around uh, 12, 12:15, 12, uh, we will uh, do uh, a very brief session of presentations uh, of your ideas of your project in, in public. So just yourself, one spokesperson by team addressing uh, all the other participants. We need to pitch, uh, to present uh, your, your ideas in one sentence of, if possible, 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, so it's quite tricky uh, to, to uh, you know, have your, your idea you know, so clearly that you can just uh, present it in 15 seconds. But uh, it's quite uh, funny also. And it's uh, very, very important for uh, us and you, and you to, to see 
if uh, you have a clear idea in mind, <coughs> or if you're still kind of you know, thinking around, you know, uh, we don't know if we want to work, work on you know, mobile or not, or what what kind of uh, you know aspects. Uh, is it the visual aspect? Is it the, you know, do we want to work around the text or you know video or pictures or or whatever? So it will it will uh, really force you to to take some some very clear decisions on what you want to work on. Uh, so these these pictures will be recorded and, and uh, uh, instantly published on uh, Instagram. And then we're going to watch them and just do some uh, you know exchanges and a very short uh, you know Q and A between teams uh, just to make sure you know the idea is clear or it's you know, is it strange, or you know, are several teams working on the same ideas? So it's uh, it's going to be a, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting uh, session. More, we're going to have more or less in uh, sort of a, in an hour, an hour and, and fifteen minutes. Um, so for to prepare these pitches, no need to go too deep into uh, you know designing or, or or already start starting coding. Uh, it's just about you know scribbling ideas, uh, maybe drafting uh, mockups and, and, and things like that. Uh, just pure brainstorming. During this session, I will be around uh, uh, for you know to answer questions. Uh, Fernando, are, are you able to stay a bit more, or are you you're about to? I may need to leave soon, uh, oh. but I can come back later. No, it's just, it's just uh, as there were there were a lot of questions, uh, and we, we kept a bit. Uh, I, I guess if there are a few questions, you can go you know to tables to answer them, yeah. and I will do the same. Right now, I take a few questions just before we start these working sessions. If you have questions, and otherwise, uh, it's just uh, about uh, starting the hack days now. So, any questions? Right now, about the schedule or the rules, uh, nobody feeling uncomfortable with the concept, of the hack days. Enough, you got enough coffee, enough uh, breakfast, enough inspiration. I don't see any any hands rising, so I think we're good to start. Uh, we we had a very nice opening. Thank you, uh, Fernando and Guy, uh, for. For the opening remarks, so now it's all about uh, brainstorming on your projects. Um, we come from you know table to table. If you have questions, and now let's go and, and start uh, hacking and brainstorming. So thanks for being here and good luck for for the, the competition beginning now. <laughs> Um, we have flip charts throughout the room. You guys can grab them your team if you want to those, post them to them. And you're welcome to go out and make an area out here if you want to go more quiet going as well. Uh, 